What's up legends? Welcome back. I hope you packed your lunch because we are going on a field trip. That's right. We are going to find inspiration in the wild. There's a lot of stairs. I think I'm going to take the elevator. You know that saying where it says, show me your friends and I'll show you your future? Well, the same thing goes with inspiration. Show me your inspiration and I'll show you what you create. Now, you can't go hunting for inspiration without anything to capture it. So what you'll need is a phone with a camera. Any phone or camera will do. It doesn't have to be a great quality, just so you can capture it and you can save it. Also, what's really good is a sketchbook. In that sketchbook, you'll draw in inspiration that you'll find outside and you'll capture that in your way without actually having to copy it. All right, let's go. Now, believe it or not, the city is filled with inspiration everywhere. You only have to look for the gold. Now look at that, I just found a sign and this is actually a really cool sign. When I say cool, I actually find bits and pieces of this actual sign really cool. For example, I love the grittiness, the texture of this sign. I love the illustration down at the bottom. And you're gonna pick out all these elements from whatever you see. Pick out the font, the composition, the colors, the illustration that they use and just choose whatever you like. And that's why a sketchbook is actually perfect for these exercises, because you wanna to try to actually save whatever you like. Because later on, if you go through it again, if you'd only taken a picture of it, your head has to do the whole exercise over and over again. It has to analyze the whole picture. But when you go to your sketchbook, you're gonna see what you love. If you've actually put some comments on it, you're actually gonna be more amazed. That's why I love Pinterest. Because in Pinterest, you can save it into different boards. You can save it for specific reasons. And for example, if you love a living room, but you actually only love the pillows of that living room or the pillow arrangements, then why not just write that down into the comments? There's so many different ways you can do that. And this is what I would implore you to do is to actually go in and, and notate that. Like take a screenshot of whatever you save and then write down what you love. So the next time you go through it again, you're like, ah, oh, I love that one. And the better you organize your inspiration, the better you're gonna be at picking it out whenever you need it. For the next part, I've captured a lot of different inspiration. There are certain bits and pieces that I loved about it. And I'm gonna try to actually show that to you and see if I can translate that in a way or the other. So let's check it out. I feel like I'm lost, so let's keep walking. All right, we just arrived in downtown. We have this massive, beautiful city in front of us and tons of stores, tons of shopping windows and bookstores and whatever. So we're just gonna look for the gold and whatever we can find, we're gonna just take note of that, take a picture and we'll see what goes. Another great place to go to is actually that bookstore. A bookstore is filled with books that have well-designed covers and you can find everything you need to right there. Now, before I let you go, I wanna leave you with these five tips on how to become a pro inspiration hunter. So number one, inspiration is everywhere. Whatever you look at, Take it in your hand and think about how you could use that for whatever you do. 
For example, if you're a cook, you would look at stones and you would think of, I cannot use stones for cooking, but then you could use hot stones to actually cook a steak on it. Just be open-minded when you look at things and always believe that you could use whatever you see somewhere. If not now, maybe later. Number two, seek multiple sources. It's important that you don't just collect your inspiration from one source. If you have just one artist that you follow and you collect everything from that person, then you have to start looking for other people. Because if you only look from one source, the chances that you become a forger is much higher than that you become a creator. Number three, get inspired by what inspires your favorite artists. What I mean by that is actually you go to who you actually follow and see who they follow that you go read the books that they read, that you actually look at what they do because you can actually learn from them the way they learn from others. Number four, save it. It's really important and mostly underrated that you have to save whatever inspires you. The easiest way is to actually create folders and save it into one place and organize it there. Save it somewhere where you can keep it and where you can find it. Number five, do it on a regular basis. It's really important that you don't just look for inspiration when you need it most. But if you do it on a regular basis, if you have a dedicated time in your day, like five minutes or 10 minutes where you're on Pinterest, where you go outside, but even better is when it becomes a part of your daily habit. To actually look at things in a different way, in a different light, and always think of how can I use that? How can I use something that's on my desk the entire day, like a keyboard? How can I implement that into what I wanna do? Let me know in the comments below which one of those five you find the most interesting or which one helps you the most. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you love this video, why don't you subscribe so you won't miss what's coming up next? Because what I wanna do is create more videos like these. And don't forget to create something today, even if it sucks. See you guys.